come on in here because we need to talk about the new documentary that just dropped on Netflix called Dancing for the Devil, the 7M TikTok cult. I just spent the whole morning binge watching it and ooh, we got some stuff to talk about from a licensed therapist perspective. Hey, hey everybody, my name is Keandra Jackson, licensed therapist. If you are new here, hey! But if you are a returning subscriber, you already know how my review videos go. First of all, disclaimer number one, if you have not watched this documentary on Netflix, press pause, go on over and binge watch it. It's only three episodes long and then come back because we got some stuff to talk about in the comment section. Second disclaimer, there may be some things that feel a little bit triggering when you're watching that or listening to some of the things I'm gonna talk to you guys about. So please make sure you are taking care of yourself. So before we get into it, put in the comment section, let me know what you thought about the documentary. How do you feel knowing that this is an ongoing process and what are your thoughts about the family and everything that they experience let's chat so first things first i have never heard of robert shin 7m TikTok cold. I this was new information to me. I've seen a trailer on YouTube about it maybe a few weeks ago and I said, ooh, when this comes out, I'm definitely going to watch it because I know y'all are going to be asking me to do a review about it and here we are. Now I could have talked about a million and one things, but there were some themes and some threads throughout this whole entire documentary and some other ones that I've watched on cults too that I want to express to you guys because it is, it's actually really interesting and powerful. Now, full disclaimer, I am also Christian. So some of the things that I'm saying or going to say, y'all going to be like, say what? Let's get into the first thing that I want to talk to you guys about, and it is cults and Christianity. Now, I'm pretty sure that there are other cults out there in different religions or non-religious sectors, but I have noticed that a lot of the quote unquote mainstream cults and the ones that we know about here in the United States are typically within the Christian religion. Do I need to name Jim Jones? Do I need to name, I believe it's called like the Nexium, N-X-I-V-M cult? One just came out about Hillsong Church. I was also thinking this too, so don't shoot the messenger. I realized that there are other, I guess you can say, denominations or subsets of the Christian religion. And there's other documentaries out there on things like Mormonism, things like Scientology, and even things like the Amish that I feel could be included in this conversation because I've seen similar threads throughout all of those different documentaries, religious sex that are kind of familiar and they they all they all go together in some weird way. So please believe I'm not here to shame anybody. Whatever you believe, whatever your belief system is, that's on you, boo. But I am not trying to bash or to shame any religious sect. I am just sharing things from my own personal perspective. And also too, I am a Christian. So this is why this whole 7M, cult TikTok dance revolution thing really caught my attention along with all of the other documentaries that I just mentioned. So while we're talking about cults and Christianity, I think it's interesting that a lot of people use the Bible and the word of God to twist, to manipulate, to change and shift some things, to say something that it really isn't supposed to say. I mean, we see in this documentary on Dancing for the Devil where Robert Shin, I believe his name is, hopefully I'm pronouncing it correctly, he would twist scripture and say all of these things. And I'm just like, that is what the Bible says, but that's not the right context. And you shouldn't be using it in that way. We also see these themes in cults where they typically have long meetings or things that last for hours upon hours. I mean, in here, they were talking about being in meetings and prayer services for three, four hours at a time. But the thing that tripped me up was this whole secret society of church services. It was like, we have church services and Bible studies on Wednesdays and Sundays, but you can't just come. It's not just open to the public. You have to be invited in. And I'm like, where do they do that? At? Most churches and most people want more congregation. They want more members. They want a larger crowd. But it seemed like this was just a very small group of like 10 to 15 people that was a part of 7M. Another thing within cults that I have seen is this hierarchical society. With Dancing for the Devil, it was like the members, they called them like mentors, and then it was like the woman of God and then the man of God. There was like this hierarchical 
uh, society where it's just like, if you down here, you know, you have to answer to the people up here and the people up here, the man and the woman of God, they're kind of like untouchable. And if you want to get to know them and spend quality time with them, it's a whole process. It's just very interesting how things are structured. We can't ignore the sexual abuse and the sexual assault and the sexual trauma that typically happens in this situation, but also in others too. I mean, there's so many cases where people have been sexually abused, molested, raped, had children from the rape. I mean, were touched inappropriately. The list goes on and on. So I see that as a common theme as well. One of the things that most people think about when they think of cults, they think of, well, how in the heck did this person get here? How is it that they fell into this? How did they get involved in this? Why didn't they leave? Do they not have a strong mind? What is going on? Those are real questions that a lot of people typically have. But what I know is that cults are not just something that just pop out of nowhere and you walk into a situation and they doing all this weird stuff and you like, ooh, let me get up out of here. But typically it is a slow progression over time. Because I know what you're thinking. You're probably like, well, I would never be in a cult. I'm never going to be involved in something like that. But baby, you never say never until it's you. I think there are small seeds that are planted in people over time. And when you look up, it's just kind of like a history of discrepancies, a history of people being manipulated, a history of a whole bunch of wrongdoings. And it's like, dang, I'm in this and I'm stuck in this and I'm in the thick of it. And I've been here for so long that maybe it's right. You start to question yourself. You start to question your own sanity and you start to question the person who you deem as your leader or the person that is supposed to be representing God. So we see little lies, we see discrepancies, we see people having little attitudes, we see some funny stuff going on behind closed doors. And you're like, well, maybe that's just a one-off situation. Maybe I'm tripping, maybe, maybe, maybe. But then when you look at it in its totality, because we all know that hindsight is 2020, you start to really see and the things that are revealed are not pretty. The next thing that I wanna to talk to you guys about is the voids that cults, especially within this documentary of Dancing with the Devil. I think Robert Shin and his whole team in 7M saw different vulnerabilities and voids within a lot of their members and they preyed on that. So think about all of the dancers who claim to be starving artists, meaning they were struggling with housing, they didn't have food maybe, or clothing, or they were living in their car. Think about the people's who father wasn't present. You see different people talking about their mother being absent or having and struggling with addiction issues and not being present. We see people longing for a community and just wanting to have a quote unquote family or a connection with other people so they won't be alone. But most of all, we see people who are talented and who are hungry for their craft and they want to pursue their passion. And they typically kind of like want the fame and the spotlight. So unfortunately, when you have a manipulative person, which we are going to get into shortly, they will do anything, they will use anything, they will expose you in different ways to kind of just make a profit out of you. It's almost like they don't even really see you as a human being. They just see someone who can be preyed upon, someone who can be manipulated easy, and they want to do that and take advantage. The next thing that I wanna to talk to you guys about is it only takes one person. <laughs> one of the things that I noticed, especially when I was watching this documentary, was that there is always a brave woman, a brave man, a partner, a parent, a friend, or somebody whose spidey senses, since we're talking about Christianity, whose spirit is not settled, and they're like, something ain't right here, something's off here, my loved one is not acting like themselves. They are completely different than how they used to behave. And mm, I'm not here for this. I want to applaud the people who know when something is off. They know when something is not right and they don't give up. We see time after time, people's parents, their friends, their loved ones, their community, even in this documentary, showing up, not giving up, 
calling, trying to reach out, sending comments on social media, popping up at the house, trying to show up to the church services, rolling around the neighborhood based off of clues that they've seen on. I mean, they were really truly showing how much they love the person that was in 7M showed how much they still wanted to be connected with them and they didn't give up. And that was so powerful to me. We all want someone who doesn't give up on us. We all want someone who's going to say, nah, I will go to the ends of the earth for you. And that's what we saw with multiple people's parents and their loved ones and their spouses and all of those things in this documentary. They went after what was there. I think the sad part about it only taking one person is that obviously there has to be a risk. There has to be a separation in the relationship in order for something like this to happen, right? Typically the person who is involved in a cult, they are separating themselves from their family member, from their friends. They were told that they had to die to themselves and let their parents and their friends go. And that's the only way that they can be saved and go to heaven is if you separate yourself from them, basically like putting the responsibility on you when everybody else has their own individual salvation. That's a lot of pressure. And also too, that is completely inaccurate. You should never have to separate yourself from your loved ones just to get closer to God. One thing that I do know is that free will is a thing. So that means even though someone may choose to be involved in a cult or to choose to stay or they're manipulated so much that they don't even really see clearly what is going on with them, they have the capacity to do what they want to do, especially since they are grown adults. Somebody can want something for you so badly, but if you don't want it for yourself, nothing's going to be done. No amount of research, no amount of getting the parents and the police involved, no amount of showing up is going to shift and change that until something happens and there's a rift in the situation and then the true colors start to come out. The next thing that I want to talk to you guys about before I give my final thoughts is charismatic witchcraft. Now, this is the part where I might lose some people who are not of the Christian faith because I am also a believer and who may not understand this. But if you believe that there is a right, there is a wrong. If you believe that there is light and there is dark, honey, there are opposing forces. If you believe there's a heaven, the baby, there gotta be a hell, okay? There are opposing forces in this world. And I'm mentioning that because clearly Robert Shin, his whole team and 7M were not operating from God or of God. He operated in charismatic witchcraft. What essentially is you are operating in a form of domination, uh, manipulation and control. And when people think of witchcraft, they think of hocus pocus spells and witches flying on brooms and you know, all of those things. And those things are very much, okay, very real in the unseen space. But for this is typically a well-liked leader, someone who is charismatic, someone who has a great personality, who might be funny, who might be attractive, who might know how to speak well. And because they are all of those things in this little package, they have the capacity to really real people in by coercion, by manipulation, by control, by domination, and people get sucked into it without even truly really knowing that they're sucked into it. And it's really sad because typically it's a leader who tries to take the place of God, essentially. They're drawing people to themselves. Hey, I'm the only one that could heal. I'm the only one that can hear God. I'm the only one that could see in the spirit realm. And people believe that instead of going to God for themselves. And that's such a scary place to be in. If you are in a church, if you are in a spiritual community and they are drawing you to a particular person instead of drawing you to God, please run. <laughs> Please run as fast as you possibly can because that is inaccurate. And also what they're truly doing is operating in this extreme sense of pride, especially for those who might leave the church or disconnect from the community. They talk bad about them. They speak word curses over them. They say negative things about them. They say that they're going to hell because they're no longer a part of this ministry and they speak death over them and sickness. So there were so many things that were said in this interview when they played the recordings of Robert Shin that I was like, did he really just say that? He said that you can't be saved through Jesus. 
only through him? When did you die? <laughs> and on the third day, it rose again. When? Okay, when did you die on the cross? Because it's giving you did not, you know? And so it's a scary place when you are putting yourself in the place of God and you're drawing people to yourself who is a fallible human being, not understanding that you're going to be held accountable for every single thing that you say. You're going to be held accountable for every single member of your congregation that you led astray. You're going to be held accountable for every single idle word that you say to God. And if you don't understand the power of that, Ooh, you're going to have a lot of blood on your hands. Now, my final thoughts on this, because I could have talked about a whole bunch of stuff and made this video extremely long, but I did not want to. I really just wanted to commend and applaud the people on this documentary, particularly who did not give up on their loved ones. But also, too, there are tons of other people out there who are going through a similar situation just like this, and they haven't said anything yet. There's tons of other churches. There's tons of other communities, regardless of the religious sect that they are in, where this is something Something that people are experiencing right now as you're watching. And it's sad, but one thing that I know is that the things that are done in the dark will always be exposed. There will always be a reckoning, especially when there are men and women who are really hungry and thirsty to have a great connection with God. When you mishandle God's people, oh, you better believe that God is going to come for you every single time. And that's why it's important for people to have a relationship with God over just religion and religious practicing. It's not just enough to say, oh, I go to church. Oh, oh, I go to Bible study. Oh, I read my word. But do you have a real relationship with God? Can you go to the word for yourself? Can you hear God for yourself? Or are you just waiting on someone who is that hierarchical situation that we talked about, someone who is a little bit higher than you and that you have to connect with that person in order to get closer to God. When did there become a middleman? Okay, didn't Jesus die on the cross for our sins so we can be connected to the Father? Why do I have to go through somebody to get to God? Like, anywho. All I'm saying is you need to know God for yourself. And I can imagine that there is going to be a renewal that needs to happen for all of the people who were a part of 7M. There's going to be a rebuilding of self. All of them at the end of this documentary talked about how they struggled, how they were uncertain, how their relationship with God has been tainted and shifted. And that's really sad to hear. So there's going to be a rebuilding of your own mental health, spiritual health, financial health, emotional health, they're really going to have to take some time and some space to heal, to get better, to be better. And I hope and pray that even some of them on this documentary sought professional help because even one of the women, I can't even think of what her name, I can't remember if it was Priscilla or her sister, but she talked about how she wanted to end her own life every single day because she was in the cult for over 20 something years and she just doesn't know what her life is like or what her value and her worth is outside of serving 7M. And that's scary. I know I've said that a lot, but having to rebuild your relationship with yourself is one thing, but also having to rebuild your relationship with God is another thing. When you have seen someone through, or when you have seen God through a particular person through a certain lens, you have to scrap all of that stuff and start fresh. Who is God? How did he show up for me? <laughs> What does the scripture say about God for myself? Let me really read and really dissect and really pray and to really just get to a place where you are knowing him for you versus knowing him just for the sake of somebody else telling you that you should. So if there's anybody out there who's watching, who's in a similar situation, who doesn't know what to do, who's anticipating or who's thinking that something like this could be happening to one of your loved ones, stay in the fight. Don't give up continue to pray, but pray for real, <laughs> not just through the lens of your leader. Also knowing God for who he is. I just hope that all of the people that are attached to this cult and all of the other ones from the past or any other ones that are current or any other ones that might develop in the future, I just hope and I speak healing over them. I speak freedom over them and I speak unspeakable joy. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you'll stick around and watch some of the other videos that I have on reviews for different movies and TV shows. And I will see you next time. Be blessed. Bye.